my monthly premium for 10 years without so much as a cold. And now that I'm actually sick, you're going to deny my coverage? Wow, that movie was a lot deeper than we thought. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 masked political messages in movies. I'm taking him out of here. He's vicious, doctor. For this list, we're looking at films that appear to be fun or lighthearted treats, but actually pack a nutritional political punch through strange or thinly veiled messages. Funds, chattels, dividends, shares, bankruptcy, get off sale, opportunities. Number 10. The War on Terror, The Dark Knight. And here we go. In this beloved superhero flick, Batman has to stop the Joker from terrorizing Gotham. That may sound like your typical popcorn superhero blockbuster, but this movie can also be seen as an analogy for the War on Terror, as well as the Bush administration. I killed those people. That's what I can be. No, no, you can't. You're not. How so? Well, first there's the Joker, who's like a terrorist that's willing to blow anything up and kill anyone, including himself, to get his message across. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. Then there's Batman, who's willing to cross the line to use a citywide tracking device that can tap into everyone's cell phones in the name of security. Sounds a bit like the Patriot Act, doesn't it? I'll help you this one time. But consider this my resignation. As long as this machine is at Wayne Enterprises, I won't be. Number 9. Anti-Colonialism, Avatar Grace? Well, who'd you expect, numbnuts? This James Cameron sci-fi epic takes place in a future where humans are colonizing the world of Pandora, a celestial body that is home to an alien race called the Navi. Break formation, engage all hostiles. Naturally, the story holds many parallels to the devastation inflicted on Native American and other indigenous cultures during the colonial era. I can hear them. Both the Navi and Native Americans had strong connections to nature and had their land destroyed by a stronger foreign force that failed to accept the indigenous people's culture, instead only caring about how much power they could gain and making a profit. This is a place for prayers to be heard and sometimes answered. Overall, Avatar appears to be similar to many movies about Native Americans, except that it's set in space. If you want to share this world with them, you need to understand them. I'd say we understand them just fine. Number 8. McCarthyism, Invasion of the Body Snatchers I can't wait for Jack any longer. Stay here. But you're not going out there. I've got to stop them. A story about an alien invasion in a small town in California where the aliens use emotionless human clones to infiltrate the town sounds more like a campy B-movie than a thought-provoking film. Whatever it is, whatever intelligence or instinct it is that can govern the forming of human flesh and blood out of thin air is it's fantastically powerful, beyond any comprehension. Believe it or not, though, the aliens in this black-and-white sci-fi flick might actually be a symbol for communism, not unlike the alien amoeba in another classic horror film called The Blob. Hey. In Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the fear and paranoia the characters exhibit about the possibility that their friends and family could be aliens is similar to how Americans felt during the Red Scare and Republican U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy's witch hunt for communists. We had to dig them out from under the most peculiar things I ever saw. What things? Well, I don't know what they are. I never saw them before. They look like uh, great big seed pods. No wonder your grandpa hates commies so much. I'm after you! I'm after all of us! Our wives, our children, everyone! They're here already! Number 7. Anti-Copyright Law, The Lego Movie Oh my gosh, I love this song! Everything is awesome. Everything is cool. This fun film takes place in a world made of Legos and is about a clash between a group called the Master Builders 
who believe that people should create whatever they want, and the evil Lord Business, who frowns upon creativity. People everywhere are always messing with my stuff! Considering it's a movie about Legos, you wouldn't think this would have any political undertones. Man, I feel so good right now! I could sing this song for hours! However, Fox News, which described the movie as anti-capitalist, would disagree. After all, with a villain named Lord Business, the filmmakers are hardly being subtle. Vitruvius, Lord Business. Taking things further is the reading that the Lego movie is actually a thinly veiled critique of copyright laws, with Lord Business representing a force that restricts characters' artistic freedom similar to arguments in the debate surrounding copyright and intellectual property. Can you feel me? I can feel you. Woo! Number 6. Anti-Capitalism, Robocop Ah, oh, you! Robocop isn't just an over-the-top violent action flick about a cop who's resurrected as an unstoppable crime-fighting machine. It's also a critique of capitalism. You are under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> you. <laughs> the movie takes place in a corrupt, crime-ridden, and bankrupt Detroit. The titular Robocop discovers that the reason Detroit is so down on its luck is due to corporate greed, as Omni Consumer Products runs everything down to the police department. Take a close look at the track record of this company. The film also takes every opportunity to throw in parodies of product commercials, showcasing the ridiculousness of it all. Guess we'd all buy that for a dollar. And remember, we care. Number 5. Equality, the X-Men franchise I will bring you home, old friend. This comic book series is about a group of mutants who are despised by society, but still use their superpowers to kick butt and fight for justice. Two superpowers facing off and he wants to start World War III. In this franchise, the X-Men represent any minority that has been oppressed and ostracized. The leader of the heroes, Professor Xavier, with his goal of mutants coexisting with humans, was modeled after Martin Luther King Jr., while the villain, Magneto, was modeled after Malcolm X, thanks to his more hard-hitting approach to attaining civil rights and his desire for vengeance against those who terrorized him. They say you're the bad guy. Is that what they say? Further supporting the search for equality message, Magneto is a Holocaust survivor in many incarnations. Unfortunately, you killed my mother. Huh, and you thought this was just a comic book ride. Take off your blinders, brothers and sisters. The real enemy is out there. Number four, Animal Rights, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> On the surface, Planet of the Apes appears to be a cheesy movie about a group of astronauts that crash land on a planet where humans are the chained up, subservient species to apes. To suggest that we can learn anything about the simian nature from a study of man is sheer nonsense. Despite its cheesiness, the movie's role reversal plot does make a strong point about how we treat animals. That the ape evolved from a lower order primate possibly man. Interestingly enough, the movie came out around the same time that Jane Goodall was making her studies and would publish her landmark monograph about how chimpanzee society was more sophisticated than we thought. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! Maybe they aren't really damn dirty apes after all. Tell us, why are all apes created equal? Some apes, it seems, are more equal than others. Ridiculous. Number three, vegetarianism, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They bash him in the head with a big sledgehammer. Oh, oh, that's awful. A movie about a group of teenagers who get lost and become victims of a cannibalistic family sounds like it would appeal to those who love blood and violence. However, some of this slasher flick's biggest fans are in PETA. <laughs> The methods that the family uses to murder the teens are reminiscent of the ones used to butcher and dismember cattle in a slaughterhouse. And then sometimes it wouldn't kill them. I mean, they'd skin them sometimes even before they were even oh, dead. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. People shouldn't kill animals for food. The results are disgusting and disturbing, to say the least. Acting on a typical 
Clyde Pewitz of Newt, the Muerto County Sheriff's Office began an investigation early this morning. After watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with this reading in mind, you'll likely never look at your Big Mac the same way again. Ah! Ah! Number two, anti-feminism, Mary Poppins. It's her, it's the person. She's answered our advertisement, the rosy cheeks and everything. The charming Disney classic about a nanny who teaches a family to love and appreciate each other is really about how families shouldn't need nannies, because mothers should stay at home. What's the name of his other leg? <laughs> what? Well, if you recall, the Banks family needed Mary Poppins to take care of their spoiled and neglected kids because the father is out earning a living and the mother is, well, out fighting for women's suffrage. I must hurry. Our gallant ladies in prison are waiting for me to lead them in song. And by the end of the movie, spoiler alert, Mrs. Banks gives up her cause to be a housewife. So what we're supposed to take away from this is women should know their place? At least that's what author P.L. Travers, whose book was the basis of the musical fantasy, believed after she attended the premiere. And if you think I'm going to keep my mouth shut any longer, I... Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. It says here you had oral surgery to remove a cyst from your jaw. This is absurd. I have heart disease. It has nothing to do with some oral surgery I had 30 years ago. Why do you have to burn them to ashes to get them to finally stop? Why do they move like a plague? Why is Israel winning? How's Israel winning? They sealed off their entire country days before the undead attacked man. An end to almost 70 years of unremitting hostility, which the Klingons can no longer afford. They're animals, Jim. There is an historic opportunity here. Don't believe them. Don't trust them. They are dying. Let them die. It's one thing to remove a piece of machinery, whether it's as big as a respirator or as small as a feeding tube. It's quite another thing to walk in and say, well, we've decided this life is only worth much anyway, so we're going to help you out. Number one, consumerism, dawn of the dead. What the hell is it? Looks like a shopping center, one of those big indoor malls. George A. Romero's cult classic is a lot more than your standard horror film. Oh my God. No chance, forget it, let's get out of here. Wait a minute, they can't get up here. Yeah, and we can't go down there. Let's check it out. In fact, all of his zombie tales focus on different aspects of real life, such as the racism and Vietnam War parallels found in Night of the Living Dead. Now, you get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. In Dawn of the Dead, the premise focuses on a group of survivors barricading themselves in a mall during a zombie apocalypse. Listen, with those bay doors open, there's going to be a thousand zombies in here. Better take the heat off us. By using the mall as the setting, the horror film appears to be taking a stab at consumer culture. For instance, the characters use the free merchandise as a distraction, while the zombies mindlessly shamble to the shopping center, just like they did when they were still alive. Do you agree with our list? You might see a mess. Exactly. And a bunch of weird, dorky stuff that ruined my perfectly good stuff. What movie do you think has the strongest mass political message? I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> for more interesting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You have 20 seconds to comply. I think you'd better do what he says, Mr. Kenny.